2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 13 to verse 23. So that we can understand Thanksgiving properly. We know what Thanksgiving is all about. We know how to give thanks to God. And we also know what you stand to gain when you are a Thanksgiver. I'll read verse 13. You read verse 14 till we get to verse 23. In honor of God's word, please, can we rise? It will take us two, three minutes uh, to read this. I read verse 13. You read 14. So, and so it was. When those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, that, the sac that he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Now, you read verse 14. Let's have verse 14 on screen. Let's follow this. Please be very, very fast. Those of you behind the, the media. Now, let's go. Then David danced. He danced before the Lord with all his might. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with sound of the trumpet. Now you read verse 16. Can we have verse 16 on screen? Let's go. Now, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through the, a window and saw King David leaping and wailing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Now, I'll read verse 17. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace, and peace offering before the Lord. Now you read verse 18. Let's go. And when David had finished offering burnt offering and peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. I read verse 18. Verse 18 is what you go and do at Soteria. In verse 18. Uh, no, is it 18 or 19? 19. 19. I'll read verse 19. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men, to everyone, what? A loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. So the service will not end here. There is a reception where, from where you will go. Now, you read verse 20. Verse 20. 20. Let's go. Then David returned to bless his household. And Miguel the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Wow. That was the comment of his wife. I read verse 21. So David said to Megal, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your, father's, your, your father and all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. Now you read verse 2 and we read verse 23 together, verse 22. Let's have it, let's go. And I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servant of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. Let's read verse 23 together, the last verse. Let's go. Therefore, Megal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Let's be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Now, the first thing I want us to show, please leave on screen for us verse 13. I want us to see something. Because what David started to do in verse 13, nobody had the understanding of it. David was just doing it. People were just dancing along, following him, you know. People didn't understand what he was doing. It was... The, the attitude of his wife that made him to reveal the purpose of the things he did. Look at what he did. The Bible says, and it was so. When those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces. Now, when I read this from King James, I didn't understand it well. So I went to the NIV version, and the NIV version said, after every six steps. Now, when the people carrying the ark are going towards where David was taking the ark to, as they take six steps... David will say, stop. After every six steps, he will say, stop. And he will offer unto God oxen and fatting sheep. Every six steps. Though the Bible did not tell us how long or how far where they were coming from. But let's just imagine, if you are going to walk from here to the entrance of this church, let's just consider how many six steps you will take. Now, let's even look at the altar here. Now, look at me now. You take the first step, the second step, 
the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, David will say, stop. Every six steps, he will stop them. They will offer fatting animal and oxen, and he will dance and dance and dance and dance, and they will go again. So I want to believe that it was not the day they started to bring the ark that they got there. Hello? So it must have taken some days. You know why I'm showing you this? I'm showing you the gravity of what David did for the Lord. David said, after every six steps, please stop. Let us offer something to God. After every six steps. After every six steps. It means that David realized something. We are going somewhere. Now look at how enormous, how big David gave to God. Because we are in a generation now, you know, everybody has become a preacher online. Where you see people criticizing. Why are you giving this thing to church? Why are you giving this to men of God? Why are you giving to God? They, you know, God, some people will say God does not need all these things. All you just need to do is to roll on the floor, roll six times to the left, roll six times to the right, and that is all. And you see, these people are becoming more popular on the internet. Hello? They are becoming more popular. But look at what David did in their days. Every six steps, will God eat the animals? No. But he was actually doing something that nobody understood. Now, And every time he does that, he will stop. The Bible says he will now dance and dance. In fact, scripture shows us that he even danced with all his might. He danced to the point that he didn't know when he removed the robe that made him different from all that ordinary people. Now, he wore a robe as the king. Now, you know today, if you see anybody wearing suits, even if he's not a pastor, the first thing you will think is, are you a pastor? If he says no, you say, are you a lawyer? If he says no, a doctor? You know, people believe that if you're wearing a suit, you are in church, you sit in front, you must be a pastor. So what David was wearing that day, because he was dancing and sacrificing after every six steps, he pulled off all those things. And the Bible says as they got closer to the city, the woman watched, what is wrong with my husband? Every six steps. Now imagine the number of animals that will have been killed that day. After every six steps. Now, I believe David must have learned from God. After every six-day walk, give the seventh day to God. After every six-day walk, give the seventh day to God. But David said, we don't have to wait till six days. I am going to make my own. Six steps, give to God. 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 But people were just doing what he was doing. They didn't know what was in the intention of David. But when David now got home, beloved, he was happy. He had given the people food. They've carried the Ark of the Covenant. They've put it in his place. As he was entering his house to say, ah, my family, you are blessed. So the wife said, come on, stop that. What rubbish did I see you doing? Ah, uh ah, -uh. have you forgotten that you are the king? And the thing that makes you different as a king is your royal robe. I am the daughter of a king. I lived in the palace all my life. I never saw my father removed his robe for once. You, this boy, I have taught you how to become king since I came into your life. But today, you are fucked up. Uh -uh. Even in public, in the presence of the maids, look at what you did. My monitor is not working here. Then in verse 20, listen, David now said, Madam, you don't understand. Do you know why I had to sacrifice after every six steps? Do you know why I had to dance like I was a slave? I realized something. And what did I realize? I realized that I was... I, in fact, let me put it in a way everybody will understand. I realized that I should never have become king. How did I even become king? Now look at how, what he said. He said, the Lord that chose me above your father your father's house and family, which means that if they were to count those that will become king, hear me, there is no how they will have counted me. I am not related to your father. I am not related to the tribe of those that become kings. And funny enough, even when they say Samuel was coming to our house, I was not invited. So, which means David was saying there was no how I was qualified. Me, There's no how. Even my father's house, they didn't invite me that the prophet is coming. 
Now, don't forget, Samuel sent a message that I'm coming to your house. All the people in the house were sanctified. David was not counted because he was in the forest. It was when God said, out of all these people, I have not chosen anyone. Go and send for the one that is left. They didn't even sanctify him. So he was not even qualified to become king. David saw the hand of God. Who are thanksgivers? I always say this and I will keep saying it. So that you understand the reason why we give thanks. Hear me. Thanksgivers are those that realize that there is a hand of God in the making of their lives. Until you realize that, you cannot be a proper thanksgiver. If you can calculate all you do to get up, if you can calculate all you do to get to where you are, you can't give, if you are giving thanks, you just be giving thanks from your lips. But people that, the only people that are genuine thanksgivers or that will be genuine thanksgivers are those that carefully sit down, observe their life and say, wait, I have seen that there's the hand of God's grace doing something that I would never have been able to do for myself. Hello? How many of us has power to bring ourselves into 2023? None. Look at where death started in the year, the past year. It started with the Ulubad of Ibadan land. The man passed on. Death traveled and went to the man they call Ikuba Baye Ye. They call himself Iku himself. They are laughing over you. Nobody ever believed that that man will die because he himself is tied to his death. But death took him. Now, look at this. David, David was able to tell his wife. You don't know the reason why I dance. I am dancing because I have realized that, see, if it was by election, I wouldn't have been king. If it was by physical choosing or stature, I wouldn't have been king. It would have been by family inheritance. I wouldn't have been king. So if you cannot realize the hand of God working in your life, you cannot be a proper thanksgiver. Praise the Lord. Thanksgivers are not those that do two plus two and get four. No, 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 no. Thanksgivers are those who do two plus two and they don't know how it is 22. You say, no, the two plus two is supposed to be four. But how is two plus two 22? I can't explain. There is a hand of God. That's what makes us proper thanksgivers. Am I communicating? David realized that he didn't fit for it. He was never prepared in any way physically for it. He was never prepared. That's why I ask a question in my notes. Can you please explain what you did to remain alive this year? Beloved, I have seen people that carry bottled water every day, have typhoid. And I see people that drink from every source. Never had it. I'm telling you what I've seen. People that they carry, you say, ever, ever bottle. I'm not despising ever. If you're watching me online, it's a very good, I'm not despising your product. But I've seen people like that. That they know the names of, uh, you know, that, that, <laughs> there is nothing they don't know. But you'll be shocked when they mention the kind of sickness they have. And this is you, even your house, there's no net. You don't even have money to buy fleet. Mosquito coil you are not using. And for 365 days, no malaria. What is that? The hand of God. That's what makes us real thanksgivers. It's not just to come and sing. You know, there are people that are singing that their hearts are not singing. Their mouth is singing. Their body is dancing, but it's not there. I always tell myself, my wife knows, my children know. Right from time, I have this thanksgiving attitude because I realize that if it is by power, if it is by might, I won't be where I am today. That was what David realized. So I just ask you a question. How many of you can explain what you did to remain alive? How many of you can explain what you did to become who you are today? Listen, if you know what you did to get to where you are today, I'm telling you, you will not be a thanksgiver. You had the speech of engineer himself. He said, upon the coronavirus, upon the several things that happen in the nation, thank God for where Peak Tech is today. It means that he realized the hand of God. 
Praise the Lord. Listen, I put a bracket quickly here. Why then do people give thanks to God? Why? Because they see his hand at work in their affairs. I was composing a song when I was in my closet, in my prayer place, and I was just singing that song. I see, my, I see your hand in my life. I say you are good. I see your hand in my life. I say you are good. Oh. I see your hand in my life. I say you are good. Oh. Daddy, you are good. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Oro Ware Laye Mi Muni Edara. Baba, Muro Wain Laye Mi Muni Edara. Muro Wain Laye Mi Muni Edara. Daddy Edara. E Shun Fumi Lord. No, I, start, I was just. It was just in my worship. The thing just started coming and I started singing. I started singing so I had to quickly take my phone and I recorded it. You know why? Because I suddenly realized the hand of God. That's why the Bible says the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. He said bread does not come to men of wisdom. Haven't you seen people say, if they open their CV, you'll be shocked. But no, they don't have job. We are running an interview. I'm my wife. We needed somebody to help us manage one part of our, our business. And when the woman opened the file and was just putting out different kind of certificates, we had to tell her, Madam, we don't need this. Please pack it. <laughs> ah, with all, no job. And you see some who doesn't have those things. Yes, we don't have, and you'll be shocked where they are today. Listen, come to a point. Come to that understanding. I'm not saying you should not be hard, be hard working. Do your part. Like I always say to, say to people, do your part and give God room to play his part. And when you give God room to play his part, be thankful for that role that God played. I have five minutes more. Quickly, let's go further. What do we stand to gain as thanksgivers? What do we stand to gain? As thanksgivers. What do we stand to gain? After it, I have one more question and we close. What do we stand to gain as thanksgivers? Now let's look up. In verse 23, we read the Bible says, and David's wife was what? Barren from that time. Because of what she said. Because she despised God's uh, servant that was thanking God. As a thanksgiver, you know what you stand to gain? Every time you are thankful, you generate the hand of God. That hand may be fighting against some people on your behalf, and that hand will be fighting for you. So that's what you stand to gain. Every time you are thankful, you are provoking the hand, the hand of God. That's one part of God that people will see on your behalf. That's one part you stand to gain. That's why continue to live as thanksgivers. Whether you have enough, you don't have at all. Now look at Jesus our Lord now. 5,000 people sat down, men. They didn't count women and children. And you know in every church, women has the largest, largest figure. And they said 5,000 men are here. So Jesus said, let's feed them. Let's give them food. They said, what do I have? They said, Jesus, if you are going to give them food, if we work for six months, it will not feed these people. Jesus said, okay, what do we have? They said that we have only five loaves of bread and uh, two fishes. So only two fishes. Jesus said, okay.
The Bible says, Father, I thank you. I am grateful. He kept thanking God after he finished thanking God. He didn't even bless the bread or anything because he knows that Thanksgiving carries everything. He gave it and said, share among them. And the Bible says there was what? Leftover. Lastly, with what should we give thanks to God? Should, with what should we give thanks? We give thanks to God with gifts. We give thanks to God with words. We give thanks to God with dance. We give thanks to God with anything we can use to express our gratitude. That's why you see that after every six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, six kill that cow. Kill that ox unto God. Now, apart from the one Peak Tech is doing, if there's any of you here, you have not done Thanksgiving for last year in your various churches, please, after today, go back to your church. Go to your pastor. Even if what you have is the smallest thing, go and say, sir, thank you for praying for me in 2022. After every six steps, because the Bible says, it's, it, uh, that, that, uh, I love putting it in Ruba's scripture. Uh, 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 she said, uh, she said, you, but you know. <laughs> she said, yes. He said, only one step is in between life and death. So every single time you take one step, you have escaped death. So, with what do we give thanks? That's what I'm showing you. Stop thinking that hey, we, 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 those pastors are enjoying. And we are saying doing Thanksgiving, they are enjoying. I can't go with my gift. I'm going to roll on the floor. Yes. Yes. You don't know that what they are doing. I, 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 I learned this from Bishop Abuye. He said, Thanksgiving is application for more. So, Pick Tech has not called us because he has too much money. He wants to waste some. No. He's generating power to run the race for another one year. So are you set? Are you blessed? Have you learned something? And in case you are here, you are not yet born again. You have not yet met the Lord. You are only privileged to come to this church today because there's thanksgiving. See, I'm telling you the truth. There is a God up there that rules in the affairs of men. Allow him into your life. I also was a Muslim before I gave my life to Jesus. I always tell them, they didn't preach to me. I saw a revelation of Jesus by myself. I've gone to hell before. Because I was asking, if truly there is hell, show me. He took me there, I saw it. I was crying, that take me back, I don't want to go again. When we were getting close, I was hearing people shouting. I said, take me back, I don't want to go. The angel said, I receive a command to take you there. And as we were entering hell, a dragon was coming towards my direction. The angel said, there is a command that you must not touch him. That's why I discovered that in heaven they follow command. So the dragon went back. He said, have you seen? Now go and tell the people. I came back again. I said, Lord, okay, I've seen hell. I want to see heaven. Is heaven real? I got there too. Only that it was at the gate. They said, no, you can't enter. If you enter, you won't return. So I was struggling with the man at the entrance. I said, no. For me to have gotten this place, who wants to even return? With what I'm saying, who wants to return? He said, I just want to show you your, your path. Look at, look at where you are going to be when you come. I said, well, let me enter, please. As the man turned like this, I wanted to dribble him. He just pushed me back. I opened my eyes. I tried to close it again. I didn't see anything. <laughs> so there is a hand that is at work. I pray in Jesus' name, you will have an encounter with him. Let's welcome.
the man in charge of the program. Are you blessed? 